Everybody loves to compare prospects to current and former NBA players. NBA comparisons are useful in trying to project what type of pro you believe a prospect will become in his NBA career. All comparisons are not perfect. Comparing a prospect to an NBA player doesn't necessarily mean that that prospect will have the same type of career as that NBA player. That prospect could still end up being worse or better than that player he's compared to. It's about which players share similar physical tools and skill sets. Injuries, coaching, and the organization's ability to develop are huge factors in a player's journey to reach his full potential. In this video, I'll discuss my NBA comparisons of the top players of the 2020 NBA draft class. Anthony Edwards has been at the top of draft boards since before the college basketball season started. He's a physically imposing two guard who can score from anywhere on the court. To be able to score almost 20 points a game while being one of the youngest players in the draft is why a lot of NBA scouts consider him as the top prospect. Edwards seems to be more comfortable shooting off the dribble than catching and shooting. He has the speed and athleticism to attack the lane and finish through contact. Has a solid handle but we'll need to improve it to be a top level score in the NBA. If he can put nearly the same effort on defense as he does on offense, he'll be the perfect shooting guard prospect. I will compare Edwards to Chicago Bulls two guard Zach Levine, an ultra athletic guard who can get buckets in his sleep. There is still questions if Levine can lead a team as a number one option. He's not known for being a good defensive player. That's why I believe he's the best comparison for Anthony Edwards. Victor Oladipo and Donovan Mitchell are also good comparisons. But those two give great effort on the defensive end. I don't think Edwards should be the number one option on offense for an NBA team, but being the number two suits him perfectly. Some say that LaMelo Ball is the most gifted prospect in the draft, and I can understand that thinking. He is just as special as a scorer as he is a passer. You can call him a pure scorer, and at the same time you can call him a pure passer. He could potentially lead the league in scoring, and also lead the league in assists. But LaMelo doesn't just pass to the open guy. He passes guys open. He's not the quickest or the fastest, and he's not an elite athlete, but his handles and craftiness allows him to get past his defenders. LaMelo reminds me of former Orlando Magic guard Penny Hardaway, a tall guard who can pass just as good as he can score. He was athletic, but he wasn't elite. He didn't always rely on his athleticism to score. Being patient and using his height along with great fundamentals and footwork also allowed him to be a good scorer before he started having injury issues. LaMelo would definitely need to improve his efficiency. He shot around 38% from the field and 27% from three. And LaMelo really hasn't shown any interest in playing a lick of defense. But I see a lot of Penny Hardaway in LaMelo's game. Onyeka Okongu is one of the top big man prospects and he should get picked in the top 10. He certainly made a name for himself during the college basketball season. Playing 30 minutes a game, Okongu dominated on the offensive end and the defensive end. He scored around 16 points a game and blocked almost three shots a game. And he also had just over one steal per game. His strength and athleticism allowed him to bully opponents in the paint, and he also displayed a good soft touch around the basket. He won't see the same touches in the NBA as he did at USC, but he still can be a productive offensive player in the NBA. He's a good rebounder, a versatile defensive player, and he has a high basketball IQ. He reminds me of first-time All-Star Bam Adebayo, a guy who can do it all from scoring to locking down on defense to his playmaking skills. Okongwu doesn't possess the vision and passing skills that Adebayo does, but everything else looks spot on. His size, body type, and athleticism are nearly identical. If he can have almost the same impact that Adebayo had this past season, minus the passing, Okongwu will be a productive player for a long time. James Wiseman is the enigma of the 2020 NBA draft class. You can see the talent and size that jumps out at you, but you only got to see it for three games at the college level. He put up great numbers in those games, but he didn't face NBA quality big man for the most part. He's still raw as a prospect, but he has the tools and size to affect the game on both ends of the court. You wouldn't consider him a natural low post scorer, and he probably will never be a good enough scorer to be the number one option on offense. He can be a solid scorer in the post, and he has potential to be a good jump shooter maybe even stretch it out to the three-point line. The best NBA comparison for James Wiseman is Hassan Whiteside with a jump shot. When Whiteside played for the Miami Heat in his first couple of years, he was a difference maker. He dominated the paint area on defense. 
He is serviceable enough on offense, but he's not a top three offensive option. Wiseman does have more potential on offense than Whiteside, and he also has the potential to dominate on defense. Wiseman is not as immature as Whiteside, but he does play with a lack of fire at times. That's the question that many scouts have about Wiseman. Killian Hayes has been developing his game for the last couple of years, and every year he seems to get better and better. Adding step backs, side steps, and pull up jumpers to his game that rivals players like Luka Doncic and James Harden. This 6'5 combo guard has shown he can facilitate also, and could very well be a lead guard on the NBA team. His handles and basketball IQ makes up for his lack of elite quickness and athleticism. If you've been watching the NBA for a long time, you know you don't have to be the most athletic to thrive in the NBA. You just have to be stellar in many other areas. Killian Hayes has good size for a point guard. He can shoot, create for himself, pass, and has the potential to be a solid defender. His game reminds me of D'Angelo Russell, a player who uses his size, basketball IQ, and ball handling to make up for his lack of elite quickness and speed. Both Hayes and Russell have similar size, both are left-handed, and both have a silky smooth game. Hayes can potentially become a better defender than Russell, and is a little more athletic also. Isaac Okoro is one of the best slashers and finishers in the draft class. He's a physical freak as he measures in at 6'6", 230 pounds. He has an NBA body already. When he starts going downhill, Okoro is tough to stop. His combination of strength, body control, balance, and improved ball handling allowed him to consistently score in the paint area during his freshman season at Auburn. Scouts are more excited about his potential as a defensive player. Okora has good foot speed and can swiftly rotate his hips to keep the offensive player from getting to a spot. His upper body strength makes it difficult on opponents as he forces them into tough shots. He showed excellent awareness and instincts as a weak side defender as he would draw charges and alter shots inside. I will compare Okoro to Ron Artest, aka Metal World Peace. He had the strength, size, and instincts to become a constant menace on the defensive end. He was selected to the all-defensive team four times and in 2004 won Defensive Player of the Year, one of only three perimeter players to win that award in the last 25 years. Okoro fits the mold as a Ron Artest type, but he will have to improve his jump shot to be able to set up his drives to the basket. Artest was able to develop his jump shot and offense over his career which made him a complete all-around player. Okora has that potential, but he has to become a respectable jump shooter to be able to stay on the court. Danny Alvdia is looked at as the best international prospect in the draft. He has supreme confidence and fearlessness that will help him tremendously in the NBA. Alvdia is a player that doesn't necessarily do anything at an elite level, but he does a lot of things well. His size at 6'9 helps him be a versatile player. He can create off the dribble, pass, and finish at the rim. Alvin Eye is a physical defender and has good enough athleticism that can turn him into a solid shot blocker and rebounder in the NBA. Becoming a more consistent shooter is something he has to work on. He didn't get a lot of playing time in EuroLeague this season, but last summer he led Israel to the 2019 FIBA Under-20 European Championships as he was the star of the tournament as he won the MVP. I will compare his game to Hidu Turkoglu, somebody else who had great size at 6'9", 6'10", who could put the ball on the ground and get buckets from all over the court. He is more known for his time with the Sacramento Kings and the Orlando Magic. That's where he really showed off his full offensive game. If Avnia can become a more consistent jump shooter, he could end up being an all-star. Turkoglu never made the all-star team, but during the 2007-08 season with the Magic, he put up 19-5-5, five five, which are definitely all-star level numbers. He was an important piece that helped the Magic make it to the finals in 2009. Devin Vassell is one of the prospects in the draft that has improved his draft stock the most since the beginning of the college basketball season. Vassell fits the mold as a 3 and D type of player. This past season, he finished 5th in the ACC in 3 point shooting percentage, shooting 41% from 3. This efficiency didn't just happen overnight, he shot almost the same percentage during his freshman season. Vassell was mostly used as a spot-up shooter in his two seasons at Florida State University, but there's some potential to be a more versatile scorer. He showed flashes of putting the ball on the ground and making a play. I believe if you give him time to develop, he can be a more versatile scorer. He reminds me of Phoenix Suns forward Kelly Oubre, somebody who was also athletic. Now Oubre wasn't as efficient from the three-point line in college, but he also came into the league looked at as a spot-up shooter for the most part. Oubre has slowly developed into more than a spot-up shooter. Now he's able to attack off the dribble and score from many areas on the court. That's how I see Vassell's game growing. 
He would probably come into the NBA primarily as a catch and shoot player, but with more time and development, he could be even more. I don't think any other prospect has seen his stock drop as much as Cole Anthony has. He was highly touted coming out of high school, and some people looked at him as a surefire top three pick before the college basketball season started. After a brilliant performance in his debut, where he scored 34 points on 50% shooting, his shooting percentages took a turn for the worse. He failed to shoot 50% from the field for 15 consecutive games. Now you could say because of the lack of talent around him, he had to force a lot of shots. And you can also use that reason on why the team was one of the worst teams Roy Williams ever coached. Anthony also missed a handful of games that contributed to a bad season. He is definitely talented. He is seen more as a scorer than a passer. I believe Cole Anthony will turn some heads if he's drafted by the right team. He reminds me of Denver Nuggets guard Jamal Murray, a player who is a talented scorer and can light up the scoreboard on any given night. Murray is a much better pure shooter, but both can find different ways to put the ball in the hole. Murray is looked at as a shoot first point guard, which is a great fit on a team with Nikola Jokic, who is one of the best passers in the league. Cole Anthony is looked at the same way, somebody who is a solid passer, but is not great. Obi Toppin took college basketball by storm this season. He dazzled his supreme athleticism in front of a national audience all season long. He showed flashes during his freshman season, but he took it to another level during his sophomore season as he ended up winning the National Player of the Year award. He is great at running the floor for his size and is always in great position for easy transition buckets. On the low block, he can finish with either hand and that helped him dominate his opponents throughout the season. But he was able to dominate players in a weak conference. That'll be different in the NBA. Generally speaking, he doesn't have a great low post game. He will have to mix it up in the pick and roll and the pick and pop. He has a good shooting stroke and he shot just under 40% from deep and shot over 70% from the free throw line. Obi Toppin reminds me of Atlanta Hawks big man John Collins, another player whose athleticism jumps out at you. He has made a name for himself as a pick and roll guy and a pick and pop guy. He is not a player who took a lot of three-pointers at Wake Forest, but Collins was able to develop that once he got into the league. Both players are not looked at as defensive stoppers. Every once in a while they'll get a nice weak side block, but overall they lack a lot on defense. Tyrese Halliburton continued to improve his game during the sophomore season at Iowa State. He's a true point guard who has the size and length that gives him a great amount of versatility. He can play off the ball, but he's at his best when he has the ball in his hands. Tyler Burton is a brilliant passer. He knows how to pass his teammates open. His patience and feel for the game really gives him a lot of opportunities to find a teammate. In his sophomore season, he averaged around 15 points, 6.5 assists, and 2.5 steals per game. Tyler Burton is quick to get up the court, and he's just as good at finishing as finding a teammate. He doesn't project as a supreme scorer on the next level, but he can keep a defense honest. Even though his shot is not the prettiest thing in the world, he can knock it down with consistency. His size and length also helps him tremendously on defense. He has excellent instincts and can guard multiple positions, but he would definitely need to add weight. Halliburton reminds me of OKC Thunder guard Shea Gilgis Alexander. Both are long rangy players who have the basketball IQ to be the lead guard on any team. I believe Gilgis Alexander is a more versatile scorer, but I believe they bring some of the same skill sets to the table. They are tall guards, both are good defensively, they are very calm and poised with the ball in their hands, and both are underrated shooters. They can handle pressure and can play at their own pace. Teammates are going to love playing with Tyrese Halliburton. Tyrese Maxey is a dynamic scorer who can finish at all three levels. He can score from the inside and out. He quickly showed what he was made of in his debut with Kentucky against Michigan State. He scored 26 points, and that was a stretch where he scored or assisted on 14 straight points. Maxi has a strong frame for his size that allows him to be able to finish through contact in the lane. Even though he shot only 29% from three in his freshman season, his percentages seem to go up in clutch situations. But becoming a better shooter is a must on the next level. He will be able to play both the point guard position and the two guard position. But two guard will be his best position in my opinion. He reminds me of Clippers guard Lou Williams, the sixth man of the year king, one of the most prolific scoring guards to ever come off the bench. He is also undersized as a two guard, but that doesn't stop him from getting buckets from all over the court. Maxi is a little more athletic and Williams is a better ball handler. Maxi is probably better suited as a six man coming off the bench who could give you instant offense. 
RJ Hampton was one of the prospects that got a lot of positive attention this time last year. And he made headlines when he decided not to play in college and instead elected to play overseas for a year in the Australian league known as the NBL. His performances overseas did not help his draft stock throughout the season, mostly because he put up mediocre stats. He often played within himself and really didn't play with the same confidence as he did in high school. Despite that, he still looked at as a talented prospect. Hampton has a good combination of size and speed for a combo guard. He is quick for his size and has nice handles at this stage of his career. But with more time, he can be a more creative scorer off the dribble. A lot of scouts look at RJ Hampton as a point guard, but I think his best position is at the two. His jump shot is a work in progress, and it will take some time before he's consistent. He reminds me of Utah Jazz guard Jordan Clarkson. Clarkson came out as a redshirt junior at the University of Missouri. His game was much more mature as a prospect entering the draft compared to RJ Hampton. Jordan Clarkson is known as a scorer, but he's not necessarily very efficient. That's who I believe Hampton will develop into. Somebody who can come off the bench and provide some scoring, but will never shoot over 45% from the field. Somebody who can run the pick and roll occasionally, but somebody you don't want to run a team on offense for a long period of time. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do it right now for future NBA content.